Good morning. It is Monday morning again, and I'm so pleased to be with you. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Christian Church in Iliopolis and the Christian Church in Niantic. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries, an outreach effort for those who are spiritual but not religious, or for those who just haven't found that community of faith yet. Today, I want to talk to you about a friend I used to have. I used to let this person stay in my life, and here's why it's shocking. Anytime I made a mistake, she would comment. She would comment that, well, that figures, of course you did that. Why would you make that choice? I mean, it was constant all the time. Anytime I was doing uh, something new, she would tell me, mm, I don't think you can do this. Who are you to try to make that impression? Are you getting pretty big for your britches? I mean, she said stuff like this all the time. Why did I keep her in my life? I let her stay in my life for decades, a long time. Finally, I gave her the boot. She was me. Yes. I spoke to myself in ways that were demeaning, that, uh, I wouldn't allow anyone else to speak to me using those words. And she would just totally deflate any self-image that I had. Now granted, our egos can get overblown. Our egos need to stay in check and we need to stay humble and stay in touch and connection with that source from more deeply within us than from our ego, granted. However, Sometimes we need to talk ourselves up a little bit when we're trying something new, especially if it's something we're not really comfortable at or something that's different. Uh, we need to encourage ourselves. When we speak negatively to ourselves, it's not good. We would not tolerate that from anyone else in our lives. We shouldn't tolerate it from ourselves. So I wanna to talk today about how powerful, powerfully bad and destructive negative self-talk can be. I want to talk about these spiritual consequences first. It can have profound spiritual effects. It can lead to feelings of unworthiness. Again, who am I to deserve that kind of love or affection or attention? Who am I to receive that kind of kindness or grace? It can lead to feelings of shame. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. I, nobody can ever know that about me can lead to feelings of guilt and depression. And all of these things lead to further spiritual issues such as decreased motivation, a lack of love for oneself, and therefore the ability to love others. It can also lead to a lack of trust in God and a lack of connection to one's spiritual self. Negative self-talk can also lead to feelings of isolation and loneliness which can lead to further spiritual distress. Therefore, it's really important, it's really vital to address this within ourselves and to change it whenever we can. All right, I have to tell you, I have a sneeze that's been hiding just behind what's ready to sneeze, I guess, and it's threatening to come at any moment. So I'm gonna apologize now if all of a sudden a sneeze just erupts forth from my body. That said, my nose is decided all of a sudden it needs to run as well. So I apologize for the distractions that may come from those things. But I want to talk about six things you can do to remove negative self-talk from your life. And this is a habit, and it's a habit we can unlearn. It's a habit we can replace with a healthier response. The first is to take notes keep a journal. Now there are many different ways to journal. This particular journal is my stuff I don't want to think about when I go to bed journal. This is where I write down all the things that are on my mind when I'm trying to go to sleep or at 3 a.m. when I'm woken from sleep and have all these worries going through my mind and thoughts racing through my head. It's just a simple little cheap journal. 
but it serves a tremendous purpose, not only for this, but for so many things, especially if you're a worrier, I recommend spending six bucks and getting a things I don't need to keep on my mind while I'm trying to sleep journal. It will do wonders for you. So that's the first thing. Uh, before you go to bed, unload your thoughts from the day. Maybe you don't need to do this every day. That's fine. But there are days when you do. If you're trying to fall asleep and the thoughts from the day keep coming back of what you could have, should have, would have done differently or at all, write them down. Get them out of your head. They'll be there in the morning. They'll be there if you want to revisit it. It's possible that you're even more negative than you realize. You may think at first, oh, I'm not really a negative self-talker. And I hope that's the truth. I hope that this is falling on deaf ears that really nobody understands what I'm talking about at all. That would be fantastic. But if you do speak to yourself negatively, this is a good step to help you to stop just realizing how often it happens. And the second task is to prevent the negative thought from developing or festering when you catch it in your head. For instance, if you find yourself thinking a negative thought, I don't know about you, but I am capable of building an entire narrative around that one thought. I have had lengthy conversations, lengthy encounters, all from that one negative thought, and they don't exist. And guess what? They never come to fruition. I could save myself a lot of time, anxiety, and worry just by recognizing I'm having the negative thought and making it leave. You're the boss of your minds. You're the boss of your brains. You get to decide who stays and who goes. Kick out the negative thought. They're not paying rent. Let them go. Then, the third thing is snap back. This is a popular remedy that you know many therapists recommend when you're trying to break a habit. Get a rubber band on your wrist Make sure it's not snug. If it's leaving indentions at all, it's too tight. Get one that's loose. And then when you find yourself having that negative thought, just snap the rubber band. It doesn't have to be hard or painful, but just enough as a reminder, oh, I don't want to do that. It will help you break your habit. Next, number four, is reduce the volume. Instead of telling yourself how stupid or incapable you were, maybe just say, okay, I was mistaken. What word can you substitute to lessen the blow? Because we do need to learn from those instances when we don't show up or we don't perform the way that we wanted to or intended to. It's really important that we don't just neglect those, but that we learn from those and build upon those lessons but the way we speak to ourselves matters. So in saying, instead of saying, oh, that was so stupid, 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 replace that word stupid with mistaken. I made a bad choice. It's still an opportunity to learn from. It's something you can look at, but you don't have the name calling that goes along with it. And then change sides, make a game out of it. Every time you hear yourself making a statement in your head, try to rephrase it so that it is neutral or even positive. For instance, uh, let's say that, um, that I spoke out of anger. I don't like to do that. I don't like those, those thoughts and those things that come when I speak when I'm angry. So when I'm thinking about that, and going back over it in my mind instead i could say thank you god for giving me the ability to learn from the mistakes i make even when i speak in anger that reframes it it doesn't ignore what had happened what happened it doesn't sweep it under the rug but it just puts it in a place where okay there is another way to do this i'm not in on my own in this I have a God that lives within me and beyond me that helps to form me and guide me. And this is a much healthier framework than, than just berating myself. And finally, inquire about everything. Be a detective. 
in um, in contrast to statements which are already conclusive, I can't do this. I don't have the skills to speak in public. You know what I mean. Instead of making those statements, seek solutions. For instance, the phrase that's impossible can become, how can I make this possible? So if you're going to have to make a presentation or do something that you're not comfortable with at work or anywhere else, maybe you're volunteering at the school or in another place and there's a task that you're not comfortable with yet, instead of saying it's impossible, saying, okay, how do I make this possible? What do I need to learn? What people do I need on my side or to consult? And what emotions in myself do I need to regulate and control? So be a detective, get to the root of these things. These are just six options I've thrown out there for you. They're spelled out on the Spirit Health blog. The link is in the comments. And if you're watching this live, they'll show up in the comments soon when it's concluded. But take the time to kick that person out of your life that speaks to you in such a toxic manner, especially if it's yourself. Don't let your biggest obstacle live up here. That space should be the space where the love of God shines through, where you hear those words of encouragement and inspiration. That's a much better tenant to have in this space than the one who seeks to tell you, you can't, you won't, you shouldn't. That's what I have for you this week, friends. I hope you have an incredible week. I will see you here again next Monday. I'm here every Monday at 9 a.m. Central Time, and I hope you have every blessing in abundance. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.